Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family, bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. All right, Sunday evening is here again, and as such, we have an awesome pair of obscurities from 1963 for you, Violent Midnight and Monstrosity. The first film we'll be showing is Violent Midnight. It's the story of a war veteran from a wealthy but troubled New England family who is suspected in a series of brutal murders in his small town. Hey. Well, it bears a 1962 copyright on the, the opening. There's no evidence that it appeared anywhere until 1963. 1964 it got its widest release under the title of Psycho-Mania, which was somewhat censored to remove a couple of scenes of topless nudity. Now, you're in luck. Those scenes are present in this version, but, you know, I had to censor them to appease the Facebook overlords. So, kind of a compromise. Uh, this film marks the first non-television appearance of Dick Van Patten as Police Lieutenant Palmer. It's yet another cheapie with a reported budget of $42,000. I don't have a lot more to say about this movie, so let's just get on with it.
I'm getting hungry. Can we quit for a while? Sure. Take ten. There's some uh, beer and cheese back at the house. You coming? No, I want to work on his background for a while. won't be necessary, my dear. So you are Elliot's latest. Latest what? Model, of course. You made an excellent choice. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Uh... Benedict, Adrian Benedict. I'm Elliot's attorney. Oh, well, I'm Dolores Martello. Pleased to meet you. And I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Martello. Well, where is the great white hope of American art? Oh, you mean Elliot? Well, he's down in the garden. I just came to get some food, but... But Max frightened you? I'm sorry, he's quite harmless, I assure you. But why didn't he answer me? He can't, he's mute. In name auto bleiben, Max. Do you think he looked at me through the window just now? Through the window? <laughs> Max has many things, my dear, but not, so far as I know, of why you're what? <laughs> a peeping Tom. Oh, stop kidding me. <laughs> One thing I never do is kid. You know, Dolores, you're a very lucky girl. Someday, Elliot will be recognized as the great artist that he is. Thousands of eyes will be exploring you, appreciating your beauty, even long after you're dead. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> Goosebumps. <laughs> All right, take up the pose. And have the poor child arrested for indecent exposure? What ill wind brings you here, sport? Is that any way to welcome your guide and mentor, the guardian of your fortunes and a distinguished member of the bar? How is Sardis these days? Elliot, it's superb. The best thing you've ever done. I would like to buy that. Painting is not for sale. That I understand. I don't blame you. But don't let me hear of anyone else acquiring it. I hate to see this place so deserted. The house empty, no furniture. I know you young people don't care too much about the past, but I wish you could have seen it in the days before the Depression. The parties. On weekends, the cars were parked both sides of the driveway, all the way down to the gate. There was a pavilion, tennis, all the women dressed in white. Everyone was light-hearted, relaxed, happy in a way you never see today, even your father. What do you want from me, Adrian? I want you to sign some papers. Since you never read your mail, I had to bring them in person. And what is all that? Amended tax returns, a resolution transferring funds for your sister's education. This last shows the sums necessary for her tuition, supplies, etc. I'll mail them to you. Sorry, I got them today. Damn. Damn. Why? Because your sister, as I trust you remember, arrives tomorrow. Really? On the 220 from New York.
Take it easy, Elliot. That pen was specially designed for me by Cartier's. <laughs> Elliot, why don't you drive into town and have lunch with me next week at the club, huh? I don't think so. Goodbye, my dear. Don't let Elliot wear you out. Goodbye, sport. So long, Joe. I'm sorry to have invaded your privacy. I know how much it means to you, better than you think I do. But you really can't shut the world out entirely, you know. Look, why don't you hire some servants? Servants are exactly what I don't want. I want to be left alone, that's all. All right. But try not to be so sensitive about the things that upset you. Like your father. Bye, Adrian. Goodbye, Ellie. Look, about that painting, if you change your mind, I want it. I shall pester you. I shall be a bore. It's one of the few privileges of age, and I shall take full advantage of it. So long, chum. Listen, Dolores, can you uh, work late tonight? Oh, sure, Elliot. Anything for you, you know that. Great. Let's go. baby. I interrupt a great artist at work or at play. Why don't you stick your head in one of your washing machines and clean up your mind? You used to like my mind and the rest of me too. Until that joker showed up. Look, Charlie, why did you call? To remind you we've got a date tonight, remember? No, I'm not sure I can make it tonight. Now look, I'm telling you, you be there tonight or you're going to be the sorriest broad in town. Do we have to work tonight, Elliot? Around uh, 8 o'clock or so? I don't know. Why? You got something planned? Oh, it doesn't matter. You come first. I'm sorry, but I want to get this finished for the showing. Where do you want me? Same pose. Is this all right? Fine. You're a good model, Dolores. Did you ever think of going to New York? A model? Is that all I am to you? Just a model? It wasn't like that in the beginning. I'm sorry, but it won't happen again. I think you really mean that, don't you? I'm hungry. There's a little place down the road. It has pretty good food. It's called Rizzola's. It's Italian. Fine. Charlie boy, drink up. There's more where she come from. Yeah, they all are so round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> hey, Charlie, uh, uh, what's her best side? Uh, for posing, I mean. <laughs> Charlie, you alone, you bum. He's twice the man any of you are. Don't let us bug you, honey. Sophia, take care of you. I must beat it, son. She's the one you should be calling names. Dolores is nothing but a little trap. She's right here with that eyes. Shut up, I said, Rose. Charlie, 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 
Joe. Uh, two nice pizzas and a couple of beers, huh? Easy, Charlie. I don't want no trouble. Maria! Take two. Two. He's a pretty rough guy. Yes, I would. Come on, I'll help you to the car. You okay, Charlie? Yeah, I will, all right. Look, now, you go home, Charlie, huh? You've had enough trouble. Just give me my knife. Okay. No more trouble, huh? I'll come with you if you want, Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry I got you into this. You knew he'd be there, didn't you? No. Yes. Boy, I bet Charlie was your surprise. You came at him so quick. Where'd you learn to fight like that? I bet you're anxious for your sister to arrive tomorrow, huh? What's she like? I don't know. You don't know what your own sister's like? She's my half-sister, and I haven't seen her in five years. She's been living with my stepmother up in Montreal, but the old lady died recently, so Lynn's coming down here to college. See. There. That should be all right. The thanks for Mr. Lawrence. Oh, please stay just a minute. It's been quite a night. My heart's still doing flip-flops. I've got some work to do, so I better. Oh, be please, just just a few minutes. Well, Lord. I I'll get a beer. All right, but just for a minute. Miss 
your boy from the bar? Oh, that was last year. You've been going together for quite some time then, huh? Off and on, I guess. And you love him? And love him? Continuing in our <laughs> you saw him. Does he love you? <laughs> That's a laugh. He just wants to play around. Like you. Cheers. It's easy for someone like you. You can do exactly as you please. But what if you did meet a girl? Someone pretty, with a good figure who could work for you, and who loved you? I'd make her my mistress. I'd make a good wife for you, really, I would. I know it. You know it wouldn't work. Why wouldn't it work out? Is it because I'm... I'm not good enough for you, is that it? It's nothing to do with that. That night you made love to me. I was good enough for you then, wasn't I? I think I'd better be going. Wasn't I? We're friends. Why do you have to complicate things? They already are. How? Oh. I'm pregnant. And don't try that. Don't you try that. I'm sorry that you're in trouble, but... That was six months ago. All right. So it was six months ago. But who's going to know it isn't your kid? Who's going to believe we didn't sleep together this afternoon? There isn't a person in town that isn't talking about us. I think it would be better if you didn't come to pose for me anymore. Not for a while, anyway. Yeah. That ought to be right. That's it. Try to pay me off. I might have known you'd be just like your father. What? I said you're just like your father. Well, let me tell you something. Things have changed since then. It isn't going to be so easy for you to get rid of me. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, shut up, shut up. Gives me money and tries to pay me off. Well, let me tell you something. I won't be shut up. Why should I? You have millions and you'll never have a kid to give them to. That's why you're scared of marriage, isn't it? Because you're scared of going crazy like your old man. And you're afraid your kids will go crazy, too. <laughs> Spencer Chaplin, Honorary Doctor of Literature of Oxford. Prague. Czechoslovaks are not going to be able to the buy the funky Tyrolean hats sporting brightly colored feathers. They are banned on the grounds they symbolize revenge-seeking elements in West Germany. Dolores. The weather. For Connecticut, fair tonight, low near 40. Tomorrow, fair with some cloudiness in the afternoon. 
Temperature is much the same as today. Outlook, Friday, fair with little temperature change. New York City and metropolitan area, fair tonight and tomorrow, with some cloudiness late tomorrow. Low tonight, 30 to 35. <laughs> developed into an alluring femme fatale in six years. Oh, très chic, mademoiselle. You could have gotten off that train from Paris. <laughs> what happened to your hand? Nothing. Is that the only bag you have? I still like to kind of head. Good. On the way to the school, I'll show you how the old hometown has changed. I love it. Pretty sight, was she, huh? Well, a killer like that doesn't have a conscience. Only hate. You mean a psychotic? With sexual overtones, as I look at it. You know, a killing like this doesn't doesn't satisfy an appetite. It only wets it. Let's get going. We got things to do. So the fight was snap, crack on pop over in a minute. Then what happened? Then he leaves with Dolores. Go on. Where'd Charlie Perron go? Come on, come on. Did you ever hear of deliberately withholding information? I'll lift your license from here like it was a disease. Shut up! Shut up! Keep out of this. They're troublemakers. The whole bunch of them are troublemakers. He's got a room. 34 Dayton Street. Thanks, man. Stick around. I may want to see you again. I hate this business. Did I ever tell you? Find anything? A man named Elliot Freeman and a man named Charlie Perone had a fight last night over Dolores Martello. According to the bartender, Freeman won on a split decision. Too bad for Freeman, then. This Charlie Perone's a sore loser, especially when he's drunk. You know them, then? Perone works in the local laundry. He'll be easy to pick up. What about Freeman? His father was the richest man this town ever saw. Practically built it himself. Wow, what a time he gave us. You see, at the end, he, he kind of went off his rocker, and no one dared put him away. Finally killed in a hunting accident. Well, come on, let's go. Hold it a second. Freeman. Elliot Freeman. Was he in Korea? Yeah, he had quite a war record, as I understand it. Of course, Elliot Freeman. It must be the same guy. He was a one-man army. Really flipped his lid when one of his buddies got it. I wonder if it's the same guy. Well, there's one way of finding out. Get in.
mister. If you want to fly, do it off the ground. We've got a speed limit here, or don't you read English? And how fast were you going, lady? Look, it's not funny. I could have been killed. Now, that would be a real tragedy, wouldn't it? Well, it's people like you who make people like me old maids. Cute, isn't she? outside. Hi, I'm Janitor Hume. Welcome to Disneyland. I'm Lynn Freeman. Hey, I know him. That's Elliot Freeman, the artist. Yeah, you know, I heard somebody say he lived around here. I'll take you to Mr. Melbourne, the registrar. Excuse me, girl. I think I'll be dummy this time. You're a uh, psychology major. It's fine. We have an excellent psychology department. Well, your papers seem to be quite in order, Miss Freeman, except uh, there's no medical report. It's missing. Well, I'm sure they must have sent it. It's not here. I hate to be held up because of a missing medical report. Well, all right. Please come with me. You're uh, in room 15 with Carol Bishop. Wish me luck. I'll call you tonight. Nice to meet you. I'll show you the way. Out, that is. Thanks. Gee, that's the nicest thing anyone said to me all day. Mr. Melbourne! Oh, isn't he here? As if you didn't know. Why, you must be Elliot Freeman. <laughs> Meet little Red Riding Hood. Alice St. Clair. I'm an art major. But there's still a lot I have to learn about art. And artists. Who's your favorite painter? Well, uh, actually, uh... The Max Factor. That was, uh, nice meeting you, Alice, Janet. Lolita. We call her Lolita. And why is that? Well, she's only a child, you know, but... Good day. Too bad, but you can't have them all. Who are you? Oh, sorry. Oh! Well, this is becoming a habit. You're Elliot Freeman, aren't you? Do uh, we know each other? We're old buddies. Only you couldn't possibly remember me. I'm Carol Bishop. Oh, sure. You, uh, you live in that farm down the road. Listen, why didn't I ever see you? Don't you ever uh, visit? 
artist Freeman says, and I quote, people are fine to paint, but otherwise I can live without them, unquote. Oh, yeah, that article. I practically knew it by heart. Listen, I can quote paragraphs about your war record, your stay in the army hospital, and your first art show at Tokyo, and the part about your father. You know, I remember him so clearly. Look, I, uh, I gotta be running along. I was nice seeing you again, Carol. Elliot Freeman? Yes? You want to come with me, please? Why? Oh, we just want to ask you a few questions. About what? About the murder of Dolores Martello. I'll follow you. in town a long time ago. How? Where? I can't remember. Arthur? And you don't expect me to believe that. Please, dear. I've got to make another exposure. Joey, don't play with my ear. I'll tell you hurting me. But you saw that fight last night. You know how I was. And my record of cops are going to question me for sure. So where do I come in? Look, I've got to have an alibi. You mean me? Look, just say you were with me last night. All night. You mean here? Yeah. Except it wasn't. Please, Sylvia. Mrs. Perron? No, uh, I'm a friend of his. Oh. Well, I'd like to have a word with Charlie Perron. Tell him to come to the door, please. Charlie, it's the law. I want to see you, man. Were you 
at the Pine Tree Inn last night between the hours of 8 and 10? Yeah. Where'd you go after that? I was here. With her. All night? Well, uh... Yeah. Well, I need a statement from both of you. Get dressed. I'll wait out here. You mean you gotta go to the station house now? Look, lady. You've been holed up here 19 hours. I mean, even turtles have to come up for air. my hand that had been cut in the fight with Perone. Dolores had been posing for you, right? She was my model. I used her a lot. She uh, posed in the nude, huh? Did she uh, ever tell you she was pregnant? Yes. Did she say the child was yours? Yes. And was it? No. But it could have been. No! Was there ever anything between you two? When she first came to pose for me. Now, we're getting someplace. What makes you so sure the child wasn't yours? I met Dolores Martello six months ago. Oh. Had she been seeing anybody else besides Perone? I don't know. Mr. Freeman, every witness to the fight last night said you would have killed Perone if they hadn't dragged you off. The report suggests that you lost your temper so badly that you didn't know what you were doing. Maybe. Does that happen very often? No. Mr. Freeman, in Korea, did you learn to enjoy killing? Enjoy it? Yes, enjoy it. No, of course not. Are you quite sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. Where the hell do you get off asking me a question like that? Don't lose your temper, Mr. Freeman. No, no, no. You must never lose your temper, right, Freeman? No, because when you do, you kill. Isn't that right, Mr. Freeman? I'm Adrian Benedict, Mr. Freeman's attorney. May I remind you that my client is not on trial and that you are using the power of suggestion unfairly to make him implicate himself. Your client is free to go. We're just having a friendly little chat. There you are. We know where to get him when we want him. Come along, Elliot. Oh, uh, Counselor. 
I suggest your client don't leave town. I'm acquainted with the usual process of law. Why the devil didn't you call me? Come on, get in the car. Why? We're gonna go somewhere. Where? Don't ask any questions, just get in the car. Come on. On your left is the old Bishop Homestead. You know, we've been here for one whole century. Is that why you wanted to drive? You've been hijacked. Like it? Listen, seriously, Elliot. I did think a change would do you good after that funeral. Or was it wrong of me to drag you off? No, 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 no. I was glad to get out of there. I just wish that... Listen, Elliot. If it means anything to you, I know that you didn't do it. In fact, I know you couldn't. Come on, let me show you the barn. It's cute. Me, darling? Well, no troubles for him, anyway. Thank you. There. Well, he's lucky. Well, he's yours if you like. Mm. Well, I can't take care of him. Then I will. I'll come by every day to see if you two are doing right by each other. Is that a deal? Hmm? Well, he says he'd be delighted to have you come by every day. <laughs> Good. Was your husband at Dolores Martello's funeral today? Why? Oh, why, he had met her, you know. When? Well, last spring. Yes, it was last spring. <laughs> she was thinking of applying for a scholarship. I see. Well, I guess that's about all. Thank you very much, and we'll contact Mr. Melbourne if it's necessary. Why should Arthur be contacted? Well, like I said, Mrs. Melbourne, it's routine. Strictly routine. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
Do you have mine there? What's the name? Alice. Alice St. Clair. Show off. What'd you say? You heard me. I've seen muscles before. I'm not impressed. Having trouble? Or can't you read? It's here, I'll find it. I don't see it. I better look at my truck. Hey. You smell of tobacco and beer and animal. I'd better look at my truck. Well, here we are. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. What do we do now? Thus, this fascinating flower attains almost instant purity, only to have its full passion for ripeness carry it beyond its capacity for growth and expansion. It dies almost at the instant that it first flowers. Birth, maturity, and death, all within the short span of 15 hours. There is then a lesson here, young ladies, to be drawn for all of us, I believe. Do not let our lives be carried by passion beyond the bounds of good taste. <laughs> What happened to you? Why, nothing. I was checking out my laundry. Why weren't you in class this afternoon? What were you doing in there with him? Answer me. Too bad you missed it, Professor. It was just up your alley. By the way, down by the lake this morning, is that the way you look at a student? One of these days, Alice, you're going to go too far. I'm warning you. And one of these days, Mr. Melbourne, you're going to go too far. 
exhibiting this fall. That would be a grave mistake. I'm the best judge of that. I'm not talking about your career, Elliot. I'm talking about you. Don't retreat, especially now. Elliot? Yeah. Hi. Mr. Bishop, this is Mr. Benedict. How do you do? How do you do? Nice to meet you. Ma'am? Oh, Sam. That's just beautiful. Speechless. It's as if I know her. I mean, knew her. How wonderful to be so gifted. Hey, where's my kitten? Out in the back. Come on, I'll show you. You coming, Lynn? Not right now, thanks. Lynn, I want to ask you something. You love Elliot. Very much. Do you think... Do you think he could have had anything to do with her death? How can you ask me that? He's my brother. Because I need your help, my dear. Now tell me from a clinical viewpoint. He's tense and sensitive, but I don't think there's anything wrong with him. Not seriously, deeply wrong, I mean, but well, he thinks there is. By now he's withdrawn so far, most people can't reach him. Well, I can, of course, but... And so can Miss Bishop, from the looks of things. Oh, but such gentle hands. They are not gentle. Now what have I said? Oh, you wouldn't understand. You don't give me a chance to understand. It seems to me you want to make your life a tragedy. It is. My whole life is a fraud. In a war, my whole platoon was wiped out, all except me. Now, why was that? Why was I the only one spared? It was because I was the best one at killing. But you're no more a killer than all the rest of them that had to fight. You must Wait, get... now wait, there's more. I killed my own father. What are you talking about? No, when I came back from Korea, there was a hunting trip. We all were there, Lynn and Mother, my father and I. We just had a big argument, see? And later they said it was an accident. And, and Adrian got me acquitted. But the truth is that I hated him and I wanted him dead. I killed my own father! <laughs> It's worse than you think. Are you suggesting that my brother is capable of murder? I thought you'd be more loyal to him. And I credited you with more sense. I will not stand by while you implicate him in Dolores Martello's death. For the amount we pay you, I expect unquestioned loyalty. I am loyal to him. The fact is that he may be brought to trial, and if he is, I'm responsible for his defense. The psychological plea of temporary insanity, I... I might have to use it. I don't believe you, Elliot. Elliot, I don't believe what you just told me.
get sociable. Put a little color in your personality. We who are about to die salute you. And we'll you. Hi, Elliot. We're busy now, then. Been painting. Really? How's it going? Oh, fine, thanks. How can I see it? As soon as it's finished. Looks like this thing's empty. Yeah. I'm not the back of my car. That girl. Following you. How about a cigarette? Sure. Want a drink? No, thanks. You coming with me? See you in a minute. Some other time. It's a little chilly tonight. of the laundry set. Yeah, I like you too. Did you ever find my laundry? Yeah. Where do you want to deliver? Uh, hey, that's unsanitary. Anything you got, I want, baby. so funny. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Oh, it really is. Who are you here with? Nobody. How about a swing? Where? Place I know. Wanna come? I don't have no soup. Who has? Let's go. Wait. Let's take this. Yours? No, dear. He belongs to a long lost friend. Come on. The gates of hell. The gates of hell.
guess she's just not used to whiskey. Then, I think I want to go home. All right, come on, I'll get Elliot to take you home. Come on. I, I just saw his car drive away, Carol. Uh-oh. Well, then I'll use your car. I'm going to be sick. <sighs> the air feels good. I'll be all right in a minute. Sure you will. It happens to the best of us, Lynn. <laughs> That's Elliot's car. It sure is. And Alice is driving. Come on, let's get you home, Lynn. No, but the room is. Wow. Look, why don't I go down to the kitchen and make you a cup of coffee? It'll make you feel a lot better. No, thanks. I think I better sleep it off. You coming to bed? No, not just yet. I think I'll go take a walk for a while. Carol, I'm sorry about tonight. I mean, about everything. That's okay, Lynn. Good night. Good night. Ha, ha, ha. 
I thought you were asleep. What's the matter? What is it, Arthur? Don't ask me. Please, don't ask me. Arthur! Broad. What'd you do to her? <coughs> she bit me, so I whacked her. I didn't hurt her. She's dead. They found her body down by the lake. They're all talking about it. All I want to know is, did you or didn't you see your brother driving Alice St. Clair in his car? I already told you. I'm not sure. But you said you saw him down by the dock. 
It was dark. It was his car. That's all I can say. What do you expect me to say? That I saw him in the car? That I saw him killing Alice? Well, I can't. I can't. All right, Miss Freeman. You may leave now. Oh, you're crazy. You killed Dolores, too, didn't you? No. No, Sylvia, I didn't. I swear, I didn't kill anybody. You gotta believe me, I didn't kill anybody. Yeah, sure. I believe you, Bailey. Now, why don't you, why don't you go back to sleep, huh? Get a little rest, huh? And you look all in. I told you I was with him? Yeah. Well, I wasn't. Well, where's Perron now? Hello? Hello? What are you gonna do, Charlie? I'm not gonna hurt you. Much.
now we got Charlie Perrone. Looks like he's the killer. We'll pick up Freeman later if we need him. Over. Answer the phone and then hang up. Listen, there's something wrong out there, Lynn. I've got to go right no, now. You can't. Not alone. It may be dangerous. I'll come too. No, you stay here. Elliot might call. If you don't hear from me in about 15 minutes, you call the police. All right? All right. I wish you didn't have to go. Be careful. <laughs> Taking me to Boston. Boston? They have a fine mental hospital there with a wonderful staff of doctors. Believe me, Elliot, it's all to the good. There isn't a jury in the world unsympathetic to the plight of a psychotic war veteran. I'll get you for this. There's Carol. Carol can wait. We can. We have to file a doctor's report.
kill others. Give me the knife. Give me the knife. Why? They were trying to take you away from me. They were bad. That first one. I saw her with you naked. Just like one of father's. I wanted to surprise you. When you met me at the station, you thought I just got off the train. Well, I didn't. I came the day before. I came through the woods. I, I saw her. I followed you. I didn't want to be alone. You went away with Alice. You left me all by myself. I had to get rid of them for you. Just like father. Don't tell anyone, will you? And when we went hunting, I shot Father. You hated him so much. Now we can be together, can't we? You shouldn't worry, Elliot. She's really being very well taken care of. But I keep thinking there must have been something I could have done if only I'd been a little more understanding, more perceptive. No one but a trained professional can really help a deeply disturbed person. Yes, but if she were that deeply disturbed, I still don't understand how she could be so clever about the disguise, the boots. The instinct for survival. She threw the suspicion away from herself onto Melbourne. What about him? What's going to happen to him? He'll have a rough time, I guess. But he's a talented man. He should be all right eventually. Well, I must shove off. How about having lunch with me in town on Tuesday at the club? Great. I'd like to. One o'clock? Fine. So long, chum. Bye, sport. Adrian! If you still want that painting, it's yours. I hate to admit it, but you're right. Her mother should have it. But I want your next one. Oh, Miss Bishop. Hello, Mr. Benedict. Why not make this lovely young lady your model? I brought you lunch. <laughs> And they all, or most of them, lived happily ever after. Next one is pretty bad, but I think of it as more of a fine cheese. Stinky, but full of flavor. 
This is one of the 60s films that's full of narration to explain a story that well, say it might be a bit lacking otherwise. Uh, the uncredited narrator in this one is Bradford Dillman, who has done a ton of work in real TV and film. Not being credited for this one was probably a wise decision on his part. Monstrosity was filmed over a 10-day period in 1958, but the filmmakers, well, they ran out of money, so it wasn't finished and released until 1963. The total budget ended up being around $40,000. But, you know, with the sets and cinematography and everything else, the film looks like they actually got a lot for their money. If this looks a little familiar to you, you may have seen it on Comet TV under the title of The Atomic Brain. Okay. We'll now have an intermission reel so you can get some snacks or do whatever else you need to do. And then on with monstrosity. Refresh yourself. It's intermission time. The concession stand is open and ready to serve you. Wait till you see what I get from the refreshment counter. Oh boy, popcorn and candy bars and ice cream and oh boy, sparkling ice cold Coca-Cola. Oh boy, that tastes good. Have you been to the refreshment counter? Remember, your favorite snack will taste especially good with world famous ice cold Coca-Cola. It's time to stretch and fetch. See what's cooking at our refreshment counter. You'll find your favorite foods and beverages, plus many new goodies to tempt your appetite and add to your evening's pleasure. Everything's the finest quality. So treat yourself now. After the show, please replace the speaker on its stand. If you accidentally break the cord, please turn the speaker in at the refreshment stand or the manager's office. Thank you. And by the way, on your way home, drive... Where is everybody going? To the refreshment center. It's everybody's favorite spot for delicious, tasty food from a snack to a full meal. Drinks, coffee, hot chocolate, and ice cold drinks of all flavors, plus all the extras, including gum, ice cream, candy. Make your evening at this drive-in even more enjoyable. The refreshment stand has everything to make your visit here a pleasant one. Why not get something now? It's intermission time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. Crispy, crunchy, hot buttered popcorn. Really good. Sizzling hot dogs, bursting with juicy goodness. Candy bars, a taste-tempting array. Tangy, tasty barbecues, served piping hot. Thirst-quenching, refreshing, ice-cold drinks. Refreshing, delicious, satisfying ice cream. Fresh-brewed hot coffee, as you like it.
and relish, you'll guarantee mouth-watering satisfaction. Mmm! And now he slips his costume on a beautiful golden bun. There's his cue break, break. to go out on stage. He's the natural. He's the rage. Meet this person at a feed at our refreshment counter. Treat the family. How do you like your pizza? Gobbled? Nibbled? Two-fisted style. You like ours best anyway. A crisp, delicate crust topped with our own special nippy tomato sauce, seasoned just the way you like it, and lots of golden Italian cheese melted right in. Delicious, and on sale now at the refreshment center. Pizza, piping hot and tangy. How about some right now? Wouldn't some hot buttered popcorn hit the spot right now? Extra fluffy, extra big kernels of it pop to perfection. Then drenched with the golden goodness of pure sweet creamery butter. Can't you just taste it? We heap the container extra high, but <laughs> you better buy two more for the rest of the family. Piping hot golden buttered popcorn at the refreshment center right now. How do you make a picture of a perfect hamburger? Start with the finest grade of government-inspected beef. Take it sizzling hot from the griddle and serve it up on an oven-fresh bun. For the finishing touches, add mustard, ketchup, relish, or the works. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Yes, that picture-perfect hamburger is waiting for you right now at your refreshment center. There's time to pick up enough for everyone. As you leave the theater, folks, please be careful. Don't let this happen to your car. Be sure to remove the speaker before you leave. If you should accidentally pull a speaker loose, please turn it in at our snack bar or box office. Thank you. Hot popcorn just popped. Try a terrific hot barbecue sandwich. It's intermission time, folks, and that means it's time for a tasty snack. How about a stroll over to the refreshment counter for a delicious bite to eat? You don't have to worry about missing any part of the show because our announcer will let you know three minutes before the show starts again. See you over at the refreshment counter. And now, here's our own special hot chocolate. Extra creamy, rich, and delicious because we whip every drop frothy smooth. Gives it something special in the flavor department. Creamy hot chocolate at the refreshment center. Pop's Old Fashioned Soda Shop. Remember how good Pop's candy and soft drinks were? His popcorn was the best in town. Some of your fondest memories are of refreshing treats from Pop Soda Shop. Well, there's no reason why you can't enjoy flavorful treats today, just like way back then. Visit our refreshments. It's refreshment time, and our refreshment stand is loaded with good things to eat. There's crispy, crunchy popcorn, and hot, delicious, buttered popcorn, lots of candy, and frosty, refreshing, cold drinks. Why not treat yourself at the refreshment center now? Nothing refreshes like frosty, delicious ice cream. At your refreshment stand, you'll find every kind and every flavor of frozen treats. Refreshing, good as they can be. Yes, tasty ice cream for everybody at the refreshment center. Pick some up now. Popcorn, huh? 
hungry, we have it. Kettle and the Popper. There are other treats for you, too, such as fresh candies and ice cream. Visit the refreshment center now. Enjoy a delicious snack and ice-cold Coca-Cola. Music to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. Fresh, lean beef done to a golden brown. Couched in a soft bun and garnished to taste. Man, that's hunger heaven. And you'll feel like you're heaven sent when you get one at our refreshment stand. Now, it's showtime. Can death be outwitted? Is the secret of eternal life just around that corner? Today, medical science patches up mutilated bodies, transplanting human skin, eyes, limbs, even vital organs. Is the next step the transplantation of the human brain? Many scientists answer yes, but they pause and add a grim warning. For in the ancient folk legends, tales are told of blood-sucking vampires, crawling out of graves to live on the bodies of helpless victims. Is man now doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities, worse than the vampires of legend? Will ruthless men and women of great wealth and power greedily buy or steal the living bodies of the young and beautiful so their brains may live on forever? Such questions may seem fanciful, but at this very moment, scientists are working on the answer to brain transplantation, and human bodies are used. This girl was buried in a nearby cemetery yesterday. Only a few hours ago, her body was stolen. By Dr. Otto Frank, and brought to this hidden laboratory. He has grafted a living animal's brain into this newly dead body. If the experiment works, the next step will be the transplantation of a human brain. The brain cells are being reactivated by an atomic fission produced in the cyclotron. Has he found the way to outwit death? Or has he created another? Deep below, Dr. Frank takes the chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. The watchman's mind was not on body snatchers, just his usual nip. Inside the vault, a body waits. This is one of the doctor's mistakes, a monstrosity an animal's brain grafted to a human body. 
Leaving the dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master, Dr. Frank. Here beneath the old mansion, the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue in dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. And Hetty March wonders. Has she been a fool, squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer? Ah, but to start life again in a brand new body, beautiful and young, no price can be too high for that. Can she really trust the doctor? Can she really trust anyone? Hasn't everyone tried to cheat her? Wanting her money while they smiled at her ugliness? But they never got a penny. Oh, how she made them sweat. Especially this old fool, companion and gigolo. How many years she's kept him dangling on promises. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. That the Austrian girl? Lino Rhodes, 18, no family, pleasing personality, whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face. But she always smiles when she's spoken to, very likely. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurements. We interrupt this mm. program to bring you a All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. Early this evening at Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Payne, 62, who evidently interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was broken. The imprint of a huge pair of hands was found on his throat. It's the opinion of the police that the same gang that has previously... Ring for Dr. Frank. So that's what he was doing.
hocus pocus, Harry. The doctor transplanted a brain from a live dog to a dead human body. You saw the creature walk out of that cylinder alive. How many failures since then? Still, it's your money. The bodies must be fresh. This specimen is excellent. And the police are looking for the body satchel. Why the local cemetery, Doctor? Are you trying to blaze a trail to our door? The final test was essential for your protection. As for the police, if they come here, I hit the switch. A nuclear reaction is set off. Close the circuit breaker. Ah. And in a matter of minutes, this house and any evidence it might contain becomes a radioactive hole in the ground. Be careful. But we can wait for that until after your operation. Well, nothing must go wrong. There's no sign of life. Watch. Pardon me, but how far is Hollywood from here? All right, let's see. 16 kilometers, about 10 miles. Which way? That way. Are you going to Hollywood? No such luck. I'm what's known as a born domestic. The next 12 months, I'll be scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, Hollywood will look out. That's strange. A foreign domestic agency has paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first trip? Yes. I'm awfully excited. <laughs> <laughs> Por favor. I know speak English very good. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? This sounds like a sister act. You, too? Nina Rose? Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez? Beatrice Mullins, eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No. I work for Mrs. March. Bone. 
three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. No families or friends within thousands of miles, no one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. Victor wondered which one Mrs. March would pick, the little Mexican, the girl from Vienna, or the buxom blonde. Victor knew his pick, but he still felt uneasy. Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl, it's insanity. Still, Hetty's plan to transfer her fortune to the new body had been brilliant. Unpleasant to think of what was going to happen to these girls, but a man has to consider his own future. What would happen to him if Hetty were to cast him off after all these years? Warm welcome to hang out. Well, there's your new home, girls. <sighs> Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? No. Are there any other servants? No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring. What a jolly little place this is. What was that? No one's to leave this house without permission. Enough. Hurry along. Hurry up. Now go. Turn round, slowly, get the doctor, get the doctor. As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. She doesn't have a brain. Might be advantages.
I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Victor, the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoil spot I am. <laughs> Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police, employment agencies, immigration authorities, consulates? There will be no phone calls. Idiot. She's useless. There is one more test I should make. Do anything you want with her. The other two? Perfect medical specimens. All right, Anita. Get dressed now and wait for the others. Mrs. March, I am now giving you notice. I do not care to work in this house any longer. I demand that... You have signed an agreement. If you have any objection, you will discuss them with the immigration authorities as provided for in your papers. But, Mrs. March... Later. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Madeline Monroe. <laughs> The lucky girl? Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. <laughs> to both of you. <laughs> For me? Come on. Come on. Your room is in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. I'll have to show you. Nonsense. You'll be all right. Go on.
bikinis. Who is it? She's not in her room. Yes. Victor left a little while ago. Maybe she went with him. She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. Yes. But she would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. Oh. It's funny, though. Mrs. March wouldn't even listen when I asked to be dismissed. This house gives me the creeps. She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. See, what in the world do you think you're doing? You told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? Oh. She left. Last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you. Another time. Nina, come here this instant. Yes, Mrs. Match? Your name is it Nina. But Mrs. Match, she's got polish all over hands, and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and down stairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. Send Nina to me. Yes, ma'am. I'll be in my room. Be come with me. I want to show you something. without taking her clothes. I think we'd better get out of here, fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You'll go now if you go with me.
One last experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body. And the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Anita was ready. It's me, Nina. What about your clothes? Never mind, let's go. almost saw us. Let's wait a while to make sure we won't run into her. I'm here, Mrs. March. She's locked us in. Open it. I said open it. Mrs. March. The 
Victor! Victor! Well, you took long enough. The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You'll have to check the basement door. It broke loose. the way Mrs. Marsh treats you. I can't say that I blame you. Kitty's always been very fond of me, haven't you? Does she have all the instincts of a cat? Watch. Is that Anita? Where? Oh, I don't think so. You should have locked them up. They're not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there's still the electric fence. The phone's dead. We can't get help that way. If we could get the car, that's it. Victor! Victor! 
He likes me, I guess. If you could get the keys from him... B. I was having a little nightcap. Who do you think you are, pinching me? What? What? Maybe you'd like some company. Someone like me? Mm -hmm. That's more like it. Don't you like me, Victor? Once is chained, let's go outside. Outside? I think I'd like that. with you. Don't you know me? Anita, listen to me. It's... <laughs> Anita. Anita, let me help you. Take my hand. 
Anita. Anita. Astonishingly complex, isn't it? The human eye. That's the brain. She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. How I need her all. She's dead. Nina, dear, come along with us now. You've had a bad shock. Get out of here, both of you. The same with me. Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. I'm preserving the eye. Let me show you. Come over here. The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. Dee is a very lucky girl. You think that ironical? Let me explain. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs, kept a portion of an animal's heart alive for many years. For this, he received the Nobel Prize. And I, who have so far surpassed his efforts. Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Carell. He was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. Your viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one held by the medical society today, which forces me to work in a place like this, to give in to the whims of a foolish old woman because she can supply me with the funds I need to continue my work. talking with the lawyer. Hair appointment, Monday, 10 a.m., Charles of the Ritz, under Nina's name. I'll want Nina to model these later, after I've rested. You tell her. They're back. I'll have to leave you now. Remember, I'm going to try to get us out of here tonight. No. Forget about me. I won't go. B. Don't talk like that.
Mrs. March had not realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's future wardrobe, but Mrs. March's future body. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. Does my uh, aged lock in var disturb you? Daddy, that's unkind. Shut up. You see, it's hard for a vain, stupid man to realize that he holds no attraction for a lovely young girl. You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. I'm not going to be needed at all. That's what you're saying, isn't it? After tomorrow, when... Victor! That's enough! Get out! If it's the way it's going to be, when what? Don't ask tiresome questions. That will be enough for tonight. I want us both to get some rest. Try to sleep. But, Mrs. March... That's an order. Do as I say. looking for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old man? What did you try to tell Mrs. March? Hmm? So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. The only thing is, of course, it won't really be you. Victor, please tell me. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow you'll be one of the richest women in the world. There's a press release. It's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March millions. Nina Rhodes has a lucky star. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion Destroyed by Fire. Cinderella Girl, Nina Rhodes, Sole Survivor. Only it won't be you. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. Please don't let it happen. You could help me and B get away. When you're a rich woman, you wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Get out of the car. And stay there. Victor, B too. B must come too. Wait a minute. Just to make sure.
you've got to come with me. No, I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? I'll get Victor to help me, and we will carry you. Did you want something from Victor, dear? Sit down, my dear. I'm afraid you're wearing yourself out with all this rushing round. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting. It's finally about to happen. You don't know what it's been like for me, living with this ugly body of mine. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. Well, nobody got any of it. I've never known what it was like to be loved for myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. March? Victor? <laughs> Victor was a fool. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank. A business woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. March. Just relax. <laughs> relax. signed a paper making Victor your legal guardian. That's right, isn't it? I told something, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. You're eating better, aren't you? Why don't you try it on your own? I wonder now if Mrs. March didn't intend along with all the rest of this. You're a very wealthy woman now, Nina. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available with the least amount of nuisance to myself. I could keep you under sedation until your signature was required. Or I could replace your brain amenable. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. Do you, my dear? Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. I guess the transplant would be better. It won't hurt. Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. 
Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down. Mrs. March did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come. What an aptly named film. Still, it had its virtues. Attractive women, wooden acting, horrible pseudoscience, cheesy dialogue. All things that help to make a bad movie better. Alrighty then, that concludes another week of fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all at the same time next week. Cheers. <laughs>